Who was Peter Tief and why was he brutally murdered? Why did the Zulu tribe massacre women and children? The Massacre of Vienna and Blokrans Peter Retief was born Peter Maritz Retief in 1780 to Jacobus and Deborah Retief in the Cape Colony in the town known today as Wellington. His family were Boers of French Huguenot ancestry. His great-grandfather was the Huguenot refugee Francois Retief from Merch, France, who fled to the Cape Colony during the religious persecutions in 1689. By 806, Britain took over the Cape Colony during the Napoleon War. They set up a British government and sent British settlers to colonize the Cape Colony in 820. Retief moved to Grahamstown at the age of 27. He made his wealth through livestock, but suffered repeated losses from the Corsa tribe raids. Such losses impelled many frontier farmers to become foretrackers and to migrate to new lands in the north. Foretrackers meant forward movers. Retief and many other Boers believed the British government had offered them no protection against armed raids by the native Bantus, no redress against British foreign government policies, and the Slavery Abolition Act of 1833 financially broke them. The Great Track, also known as the Groot Track in South Africa, started in 1835 when over a three-year period more than 12,000 Boer farmers and their families left the Cape Colony in several groups. They moved into the South African interior by ox wagon in search of land where they would be free and beyond the British control. By 1837, Peter Tief was elected as one of the Voortrekker group leaders and governor of the Voortrekkers. In November 1837, Retief started negotiations for land in the Port Natal with the Zulu King Dungang. He convinced Voortrekker leaders Gerrit Maritz and Andries Hendrik Potgita to join him in January 1838. On Retief's second visit to King Dungang, the Zulu agreed to Boer settlements in the Natal, provided that the Boers recover stolen cattle, which was taken from the Zulus by the rival Trokwa tribes. Peter Retief and his men managed to return 700 of the stolen cattle back to King Dungang, and they agreed on a treaty. King Dungang invited Peter Retief and 100 of his men to join them for a celebration. Despite warnings from the other camps, Retief and his men left in the belief that he could negotiate with Dungang for more permanent boundaries for the Natal settlement. A treaty was drawn up by Retief secretary Jan Gerrits Bankis, outlining the areas of the Natal to be secured for the Boers to settle and start their new farms. It was signed by King Dungang and Piet Retief, with two sides recording three witnesses each, dated on the 6th of February 1838. But King Dungang betrayed the Voortrekkers. Dungang leaped to his feet and ordered his soldiers to capture Retief and his men as well as their coloured servants. Retief and his men, which included Retief's son, Peter Cornelius, and the servants, about 100 people in total, were taken to a nearby ridge. Here, the Zulu soldiers bludgeoned every man to death with clubs. Peter Retief was left to die last so that he could witness the deaths of his son and men. Retief's chest was sawn open and his heart and liver was removed and brought to Dungang in a cloth. Their bodies were left on the Kwamatikwane hillside to be eaten by vultures and scavengers. When Retief's group failed to return on the 12th of February as had been expected, Gerrit Maritz became concerned and visited many of the family groups, warning them. In some cases he was successful, but many disregarded his warnings. After killing Peter Tief and the people of his delegation, the Zulu King Dungang sent 10,000 fully armed Zulu warriors to kill the remaining Voortrekkers and their families camped at Doerenkop. At about midnight on the 12th of February 1838, the Zulus began their assault on the tracker encampments while the campers were asleep. Some managed to escape to warn the other camps. Little did the trackers expect such an invasion as they had all heard and believed that the Zulu king was friendly towards them. The Zulu warriors were ordered to kill every Boer woman and child. The advanced tracker camps were dispersed in small groups over a 25 km range. The Zulus went through the camps at Moorspreit, Rendsburgspreit, 
Blokrans and other sites along the Bushman River, near the area known today as the town of Vienen. The trackers who received no warning of the Zulus were those along the Moertzbreit and Blokrans rivers. Whole families camped at Moertzbreit were overwhelmed and killed. Here, a 12-year-old Boer child, Johanna van der Merwe, sustained 21 spear wounds but luckily survived. The camps at Rendsburgsbreit managed to defend themselves and their families, but were overwhelmed and many were killed. Not a soul was spared. Men, women, children and infants were brutally murdered. Amongst the four trackers, 41 men, 56 women and 185 children were killed. In addition, another 250 Khoi Khoi and Basutu that accompanied the four trackers were killed, bringing the casualties to 532 lives that were taken by the Zulus. Many of the surviving fur trackers had to face the horror of treating the wounded and burying the mutilated corpses of the men, women and 185 children, as well as those of 250 servants, of which many of them were children themselves. They were mainly of Khoi Khoi, Basutu and Ndebele descent. There are journal entries made by those that survived the massacres, detailing what they had witnessed. They weren't just killed, but brutally slaughtered. The recollections of Isaac Johannes Breitenbach, 18 years old at the time. The scene that the Boers found could not be described. Women laid their cut open, children had their heads bashed against the wagon wheels. Others hung in thorn trees amongst the branches. The men fought to their death, but were gruesomely mutilated. The tents and sails were cut to pieces, the bedding also shaken out. The chests broken and the contents destroyed or stolen. Nothing remained in place. Breitenbach's grisly account is confirmed by Jakobus Nikolaus Boschow, who reported a few months after the terrible slaughter. As the day began to dawn, the Zulus were perceived at some of the scattered wagons. There they surrounded them, and the cries of the women and children were heard mingled with the report of a few shots that were fired now and then but the word mercy was unknown to these miscreants. Not even satisfied with stabbing their wetted broad spears into the bosoms of unresisting women, or piercing the bodies of infants who clung to them, they cut off the breasts of some of the women and took some of the helpless babies by the heels and dashed their heads against the iron bands of the wagon wheels. The impact of the tragedy of February 1838 was so great that it was commemorated immediately. In April 1838, the Voortrekkers laid out a town named Vienen, which is Dutch for weeping. It was later that the scattered remains of the Voortrekkers killed in the area were exhumed and reburied near Chivoli in a communal grave. The Dutch inscription on the front reads, In memory of the Voortrekkers murdered, they paid for our land with their blood. 17th of February 1838. In the next video I will talk about the Battle of Blood River. The Petritiv's delegation massacre and the Viennan massacre was the motivation for the foot trackers to confront the Zulus in the Battle of 16th December 1838, where 470 foot trackers fought against an estimated 15,000 to 21,000 Zulus, which the foot trackers won. The battle is known as the Battle of Blood River.